Brandos would be giving a penetrating critique of your performance at the end uh, from the ear training department. Welcome to Jan's Hans Auditorium, uh, in which uh, Berkeley College of Music uh, would be uh, giving you its 42nd annual high school jazz festival. Enjoy.
coming out today. My name is Brian Lewis. So, I'm going to use a certificate here at your school. Thank you for participating. And uh, let's see, who is your first term? What's your name? Brandon Page. Brandon Page. Brandon Page. The what was that again? Brandon Page. Great. Brandon, we were really impressed by your, your solo in that uh, blues too. First of all, nice job, Bones, as a, as a section there in that first song. It was nice and tight. All that uh, tonguing was very uh, precise and uh, came out nice and strong and clean. Um, they're also, well, let me just go down tune by tune here. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to alter certain things in the music if it's, uh, let me, can I take a look at your first chart score for a sec? Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Sometimes you don't want to alter you know, classics like Duke Ellington. But there are, you know, there are times when certain, certain types of effects, you know, you want to pick and choose for, you know, for your band. For Ellington's band, they, they are masters at the whole you know, plunger mute thing, you know, you know, opening them up at just the right time and stuff. And it's, it's, it's really a, a mature effect for, for a band that's really traditional and uh, very at home with that. So in places where you have long stretches, where you have that, that kind of closed plunger sort of thing, some of it was, some of the solos are getting buried by that effect. So I would think that maybe you could experiment with uh, a little bit of, you know, just letting the solos play for a while and, and then maybe bringing those things in instead of each soloist having to, you know, blow on top of that. And, and also trumpet players, when you're when you're doing that, don't close it up completely. If you close the close the horn completely, it's you're going to get this kind of a strange sound coming out of your instrument that you don't want. So make sure if it's if it's closed, it's not tightly closed. It's open. It's pretty open. It's just partially closed. Or you know, kind of have it close and then slowly open it for effect. But if you clamp it down, it's it's not going to it's not going to be too too good. So. Just get the give the solos a chance to project. All right, so nice trombone solo on that first thing. Um, now the the piano thing, you have a lot of uh, you're doing a lot of uh, like triplet type effects, right? Okay. Was that in a solo kind of context, or was that kind of a comping thing? Within the song, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, Unless there's something that really demands that, you know, it's like a boogie woogie sort of shuffle. I mean, I know it's a shuffle, but you, know, you could you could maybe save that effect for when it's really going to be make a lot of impact. If you just do it as a comping thing, it may not uh, you know, it may not work as, as great in a, in a jazz context. So be you know be careful when you introduce that type of. Uh, Comping effect that you know the constant triplets like that, the pop, 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 sort of thing. Oh, okay, that was written. Was that written? Yes, that was written. Okay, well, even even then, make sure that that's uh, used for its best effect. You know, maybe when Ellington played it, it had a certain type of interaction with the soloists. I, I, I sort of felt that coming out of context somewhat. Okay, so be careful with those. The Midnight Voyage thing. Uh, nice drum solo intro. However, this song is, is very kind of low key, especially at the beginning, and it was sort of surprising that we had such a dynamic drum solo that led into such a kind of low key song. And I was thinking, as, as the second song, uh, the last song was finishing, I was thinking, you know, that drum solo would have been perfect to lead into the last song, you know, just the, the, you know, because he got right into it. And I, I especially liked your drummer because, you know, he's, he's definitely always trying to make things happen in the band, you know, trying to get everybody fired up, and that's what a good drummer does. So bravo to you for doing that. I could sense it, you know, you're trying to pull, get everybody excited and, and going, and I think you were achieving that too. So uh, 
be careful not to, to kick too much. I know you're getting excited. I know you're being, you know, musical and stuff. But when the dynamic, the general dynamic of the band is low key, keep the kicks fairly low key too. Okay, don't uh, you know try to, to do too much, try to make too much happen. Uh, sax soles were nice and expressive. You know, they were fine, they were mellow, but uh, they were the notes were well chosen, and uh, you know everything was sounding good, very musical. The last song, great energy from the band, especially from the drums. And uh, if, if possible, since there are like 60 trumpet players, when you come in, when you have the solo like that coming out of the second scene, you can have somebody else cover your part, leading into your solo, so you can get down in front, kind of blow in front of the band instead of back in the section. Because if, if at all possible, we'd, we'd love to hear you project a little bit more. Anyway, it was uh, well chosen stuff, and uh, it's a pleasure to hear you play today. Hopefully, we get a chance to hear you again in the future. So, thanks for coming. Good luck with the program. Great job.